Hey guys, welcome back to the JPM Performance Channel. Uh, we are working on a transmission today. Kind of an interesting transmission. Um, it's an X-Track sequential out of the Cadillac. This is actually a second transmission. And what we're doing is we're gonna change the drop gears. What he's got is he's got two transmissions. Depending on which track you go to, it's easier just to change the whole transmission um, for top speed. So what we've got is we have a set of drop gears. So depending on the track you go to, you can change your ratio in the front of the transmission to change your effective top speed. So the other transmission is currently geared for about 155 miles an hour. We are going to change the drop gears in this transmission so he can hit about 180 miles an hour. So couple of things that are interesting on these transmissions. Let, let's get a little closer look. These transmissions are pretty tidy, pretty small. Obviously there's a bell housing that goes on here and the transmission is set pretty far back in the car. But this is only 16 and a half inches from the front flange to the back flange. And honestly, it doesn't weigh any more than your standard Miata transmission. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is this is a lot more expensive for starters because it'll hold up to about a thousand horsepower. And uh, obviously really nice um, high, high performance case, all magnesium, super light. The gears are all really light. Uh, it's just really designed well. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to change the drop gears in one of these X-Track sequential transmissions. So it's actually pretty simple. We've got a section here in the front where the drop gears reside. And then if you were to change the gears inside, then we would have to get into the back. Now, to get into the back, which we're not going to be doing today, but I wanted to show you all these neat tools. Very custom special tools for each process in order to get into the back of these transmissions or just get into the transmission itself. Fortunately, just to change drop gears, we don't need any of this, but we do have them. Sometime when I get into one of these, we'll do another video on that, but this is, I'm at the track, my gearing's wrong, I don't have a second transmission like some people do. Um, but I do have a pair, set of drop gears. It's not hard to pull these transmissions out of the car. It's just four bolts here. Once you have your drive shaft out and your shift linkage off, it's actually pretty simple. So let's get into it. So there are a number of nuts. This one here is really the only tricky one because it is captured right here. So you can only pull it back so far before we have to get the other nuts off so that we can get it completely off. You'll see what I'm talking about. So we'll get this one backed off as far as we can and then we'll get into the rest of them. So these are all nice nylock nuts and AN washers behind every one. So let's break the rest of these loose. Some of them are recessed up inside here. We'll just break them loose. You can see that they're not super, super tight. They don't need to be. Two. 
bottom ones off. Okay, got all the nuts off except for this one because it's gonna hit right here. Do not use a regular hammer. Use a little dead blow on the back side of the aluminum. Just give it a little tap and it'll come loose. We'll get this last nut off of here. that and it'll just wiggle off. Now some of the washers are going to fall because they're recessed down in here and they're kind of hard to get to. There we go. Okay, so pretty simple. You've got your input shaft driving this gear here. This gear drives this gear. So we have a ratio difference here. So these will only go one way because this is splined. Right there. So it has to go onto this counter shaft. So that one is being driven. This is a 23, 26. So we've got a 26 driving a 23. That gives you a ratio. Now this one is retained by a little lock nut. And it's not super tight. Generally, um, I'll put just a little drop of red Loctite and just this little 3 8 gun should pull it off. There we go. So here is our, oh, and there's a washer. Make sure that you install this washer the right way. There's a bevel right here. You can probably see it right there. That goes in towards the gear because there's a bevel in the gear and this holds it in. So make sure we don't put that in backwards. Now what we're installing is a 2721. So you can see that this gear is larger than this gear and this gear is smaller than this gear. So this is going to change our ratio fairly significantly to enable us to go faster because the larger gear is driving the smaller gear. It's an overdrive. Um, oftentimes you don't want to run in overdrive but with these transmissions and these cars when you're going this fast, when you're going 180 miles an hour, sometimes you have to overdrive the tranny slightly. So we will slip this in. Obviously this can only go one way. It'll slide into its bearings just like so. Just a little drop of Loctite. Not a lot. Our washer oriented the right direction, and then our nut. So, how tight do we tighten this? Well, if we had a fixture to where we could actually lock this input shaft in position, you could probably come up with a good torque spec, um, which is only going to be about 35 to 40 foot pounds. If you have a gun that you're used to, and you kind of know, and you can watch the nut, that's all you need. Right about 40 foot pounds, and that will hold that in there. Um, I've been doing it this way for a couple years, it has not been an issue. So, 
Now these cases are all O-ringed. So you can see the O-ring here all the way around. Take a good look at your O-ring. Make sure it's in really good shape. Wipe it down just a little bit. Always a good idea to have some spare O-ring material as well. So we'll move these drop gears out of the way. We will simply install the new drop gear. Slides right into place. And we'll slip this back on. How easy is that? So the hardest part, obviously, about this whole project, so you can see I'm having to pull the case back a little bit to get this nut started. And then once it starts, we're good. Hardest part about this whole project is getting the transmission out of the car. Uh, but now that we've got that taken care of, we've got our new drop gears in, we're re-geared. All we do is toss it back together, tighten up the nuts. Um, I generally torque those at about, again, 35 foot-pounds, which is plenty. Uh, they're not going to back off, and the O-ring is going to keep it sealed, so we don't have to deal with silicone here. And uh, that's all there is to it, guys. So don't be intimidated just because you've got a super expensive transmission in your car. You, too, can change the drop gears. Now, disclaimer time. If you think that it's time to get into the main section of the case and you haven't done it before, if I was you, I would find someone to do it, unless you've done it many times. It's a little tricky. All of these tools are utilized in a very specific fashion. Um, like I said, there will be a video down the road where we'll get into that the next time I have to replace dog rings in one of these transmissions or something of that nature. So, um, but we'll just get this tightened back down, get all the nuts on, and we're good to go. So, as always, guys, if you have any questions, hit me up below. And uh, if you're lucky enough to have an extract sequential transmission in your car, I guess you're lucky enough. Have a great day. Talk to you next time.